fantastic because uh, Adam you know, sold like a million books last year and we can't all do that. So uh, this presentation will be kind of rapid fire things you can do to reach more readers and make more money from your books. So I hope you're excited. Uh, so the slides are going to be there. You obviously can't all see it, um, but I've also put a download at thecreativepen.com forward slash LVF17 so you can get the slides. Okay. First lesson, whenever you're talking to a group of people, make sure you give them your website. Uh, okay, so let's go. The first thing to remember is that it is not one book. The problem with authors is they so often think, oh, I finished a book. It's a book. It's not one product. It's actually multiple products. And as indies, we can do this ourselves. So first of all, ebook, print book, audio book. We can do all these as indies now. And many of us do all of these very successfully. So many people think, oh, oh, you publish online. You just do an ebook. But no, uh, you definitely want to be doing print and audio as well if uh, if your business gets to that point. But at least do ebook and print. So at first, it's not just one ebook format either. It's more. We're going to come to that in a minute. But if you have nonfiction, so who writes nonfiction? Here's a little tip for you guys. One print book doesn't need to be one print book. So both Orna and I have workbooks. You can turn a non-fiction print book into a workbook that you can then have at your events. You can sell it on uh, Amazon as another product. So, and it cost me about 40 pounds to turn my print book into a workbook and it adds another income stream. And multiple streams of income is what it's all about at this level. You can also expand your book into a course and many of us now uh, sell courses or a full day event uh, like Orna and I are doing in May and there's some leaflets around about that. So you can turn your knowledge into these multiple streams of income. Then coming back to ebooks, you don't just need to sell on the wonderful Amazon. Um, obviously, Amazon changed, changed all of our lives uh, with the Kindle. But this is my graph. Those of you who can't see it, 51% of my book sales income is from Amazon KDP. That's a lot smaller chunk than a lot of big publishers, actually. <laughs> but I make 14% from iBooks, 13% from Kobo, 10% from CreateSpace, and then a whole load of other smaller ones. So if you have enough books to make it worthwhile, you can go wide. And that means your e book is also multiple streams of income, which can be very exciting. You can also sell in multiple countries because, believe it or not, the UK is not the center of the book sales universe. There are 300 million readers waiting for your book in America, <laughs> which is pretty exciting. And of course, with the pound dropping at the moment, making money in US dollars is a good idea. Uh, so this is my graph again, if you can't see that. 46% of my book sales income comes from America. 20% from Canada, 22% UK, 7% Australia, and then a whole load of other countries. In fact, this is my Kobo Writing Life map. I've sold books in English in 83 countries. There are many traditionally published authors who have not sold books in 83 countries. So that's pretty cool, right? That you can reach readers all over the world with your words through these multiple sites. Um, you know, including places like Namibia, which I really love. <laughs> I think it's cool to have a readership there. Uh, and uh, there are English speakers all over the world. So there are actually 125 million English speakers, educated English speakers in India. And of course, Amazon's expanded into India. There's many different opportunities in India. So don't just think your book in English will only sell in like US, UK. Uh, the, the UK has 63 million, so it's actually a lot smaller market than some of these other places. So make sure your book is available. And if you have sold your rights or some of your rights to a traditional publisher, consider self-publishing in these other markets. So if you haven't sold Canada, then why don't you self-publish in Canada, for example? If, you, if you've only sold UK Commonwealth, then self-publish in America. Do you see how you can actually do this now? You are empowered as the creator to license your rights to whoever you like and to self-publish elsewhere. So that's pretty exciting, right? That you can do that, you can reach these markets. Okay, more tips. Go short. So many people, because of the traditional publishing industry's obsession with spine size in physical bookstores, assume that a book has to be a certain size, but it actually doesn't. With digital and online sales, readers are less sensitive about the size of the book. 
So here's two examples of authors who've made uh, multi six figure, no, seven figure <laughs> income from short books. Um, Steve Scott or SJ Scott in the non fiction space, and Holly Ward, HM Ward in the uh, fiction space, who's recently been on the self publishing formula podcast talking about that, which is awesome. So these are authors who have put out short books under 40,000 words. And have met, you know, for two dollars ninety nine, making two dollars a book profit on that, and have made a very good living. So, those of you who are authors here, who has novellas now? Who is doing short works? Yeah, so quite a lot of people, and it's a really good way. One, it's quicker to write. You can write. 30,000 words in a lot shorter time than you can 90,000 and two it can keep things going and you'll have seen even authors like uh, Jack, Jack Reacher, Lee Child with the Jack Reacher books putting out novellas now so this is something traditional publishing has got into as well so go short write more books. <laughs> so um, there is a myth in publishing that you write your first novel and you make a million and you can retire. That's it. That's actually not the reality of most of our lives. Adam is a bit of an outlier with one particular book that went nuts, but Adam also has other books too. Um, and these are Joseph Alexander, who was here yesterday, don't know if he's here today, but he has a guitar series, um, doing very well. I've put myself up there, and uh, the lovely Mark Dawson. Um, you know, we all have a business because we have multiple products. If you went into a pie store and there was only one pie, it wouldn't be a very good store. <laughs> so you've got to think about this as a long-term business as a writer. It's not just about one book. And of course, the more books you have, the more money you make, the more choice you have around publishing. Next one, go long. Okay, so box sets, this is kind of the opposite. So something like 87% of my book sales income at Kobo and iBooks is box sets. So box sets, are, digital box sets, are essentially bundles of books that you sell at a discount and the readers love it. So instead of, and I put up there several of my boxes of three, but also a box of eight that um, they recently did a promo at iBooks on. So for eight, you get eight thrillers. And I think the full price was around £25 that reduced to £9.99. Great deal, right? So you sell all of these books and you might think, oh, well, I'm taking a, a cut on that. But that's a reader. If a reader reads eight of your books in a weekend, like a binge, do they love your books? Are they a fan? Yes, they are. And also, you've got more money from that one customer. So that's awesome. If you are not doing bundles like this and you're self-publishing, you're missing out on serious money. So really important, and on sites like Kobo and iBooks, the bundling can be some of your biggest promotional deals. So uh, just a recommendation there, it's best if you have three books either in a series, fiction or non-fiction, or three that will suit a similar audience. So if you're literary fiction, then they have to be related in some way. Okay, and it's also easier to hit the bestseller list when it's a bargain. So uh, last August, I hit the USA Today list, with one of my own box sets, and before that hit the New York Times with some other uh, authors. So this is the type of thing you can do with promotion that we'll be talking about that will enable you to hit some of the bestseller lists. Okay, I know we're going fast, but this is the, this is the fun. <laughs> uh, write books that people want. <laughs> I know, it's shocking, isn't it? really is. But basically, by search terms, so this is um, an example of uh, the Amazon Kindle Store's search terms. I just put in how to be a D, and those of you who can't see it, starts with how to be a dominant. I haven't actually written that book, but maybe some of you would like to. <laughs> um, how to be a demonologist. But my example, my first book, was called um, How to Love Your Job or Find a New One, which was not exactly a catchy title. When I did some keyword research and changed the book title to Career Change, it sold a lot more books. And that because people are searching for career change in the store. So you can, and also remember as an indie, you can change your book titles, you can change your covers, you can do whatever you like and rebrand later on. So writing books that people want by search term, particularly useful for non-fiction authors. Write books that people want by genre. I'm sorry to tell you poets <laughs> that you know poetry is not one of the biggest selling genres. It's for the love of the craft. <laughs> but if you go to authorearnings.com, if you guys don't know authorearnings.com, definitely go there and have a look at the data. But essentially, they found that on the Amazon top 50,000 um, eBooks, 69% of that is genre fiction. So that's mysteries, thrillers, romance, sci-fi, fantasy. These are the, the biggest selling genres for uh, indies as well. 
Uh, and actually, if you look at the Forbes top uh, selling authors in the world, they're pretty much all genre fiction. Okay, so rebrand and relaunch. Many of you already have books, right? And you're like, they're not selling well enough. Well, this is um, some examples of my own <laughs> first attempts and uh, the original titles and covers and the new titles and covers. So again, many of you can't see it. But basically, my original books were Pentecost, Prophecy, and Exodus. I have a master's in theology and a bit of an obsession with Dan Brown. Um, and now they're rebranded as Stone of Fire, Crypt of Bone, Ark of Blood, and that's my Arcane series. Now, I retitled them. I changed my author name. I changed the covers. I pretty much changed everything except the story <laughs> and it sells more through the rebranding so that's something to do uh, very important if you start as an indie you will make choices that later you might want to change and that's fine that's how we all learn uh, get started okay write a branded series is the next tip uh, the big names do this James Patterson you'll see has has loads of them in his verticals. Uh, Janet Ivanovich there, Chicken Soup for the Soul, these are big brands. Um, and again, if, you write, if you're writing books for the same type of market, you're going to sell more books. And again, you can also put them in um, box sets and bundles. So writing a branded series means that the covers should look similar so that people know that, that this is the type of book they're getting and they're like, oh, it's another one of those books. Um, you know, you guys have seen that with traditional publishing. Well, that's what you need to do as an indie. And then finally, um, you can do all of that and you still need to do some kind of marketing <laughs> because, um, you know, there are lots of books out there. I mean, you can see that at the book fair, right? It's in, in one way really exciting and another way really depressing to see how many books are out there. Um, so you have to do some kind of marketing, but it depends on you as to what that is. So, for example, I have a podcast some of you are podcasters. Orna, I've put there Orna's blog. Orna blogs, I blog. You don't need to blog, but we do. Uh, you can use Facebook ads. You can use Amazon Marketing Services or BookBub or KDP Select. There are a lot of marketing options, and we'll be talking a bit about that um, next. But the point is you have to do something. Don't be one of those authors who comes up to one of us and says, oh, hey, my book's been out for like six months and I've sold nothing. And we're like, so what have you done? <laughs> to try and get some notice on it and you say nothing I just uploaded it to Amazon that's not going to be enough anymore so um, those are just quick fire things that you can do to reach more readers and sell more books and uh, as I said you can download the slides at thecreativepen.com forward slash lbf17 and there's also a whole load of other things on that page webinars and our day together and stuff so there you go over to Gabriel <laughs>